Hey everyone and good morning from Dallas, Texas, where today we're at the Perot Museum of Nature and Science right here in the middle of downtown. I'm going to show off all the exhibits and uh, collection of stuff that this museum has mm -hmm. to offer. I go by the Lich. That is my wonderful girlfriend Molly. Let's go check out the Perot Museum of Nature and Science. And a really cool ar architect. Yeah, I love this. It looks like an escalator to a T-Rex. That's fantastic. That's awesome. We are now in the lobby area. It costs you about $20 to come on in. Uh, there's a dancing water sculpture that I think, Molly, are you activating that as you're moving around? I am. It fills up. That is pretty cool. A very modern lobby type area as well as there's a dinosaur in here. And our journey begins here with an escalator ride. Up we go. And then you go from one escalator to a second escalator. All right, and from the second escalator, we move to the third one. And this is the really cool one that we saw from the outside. You know, you get the cool view of the, uh, the Dallas skyline. You're right by the aquarium too. That's the Dallas World Aquarium right there. A uh, really nice aquarium. Got to do that on my last trip out here. Uh, kind of more of a rainforest zoo than an aquarium. And at the top here is indeed that Tyrannosaurus Rex. I uh, love the placement of it. You can see him chasing some, some smaller flying dinosaurs. Just so neat. Like really, really cool design by whoever whoever architecture this museum here. After the never ending elevators, the first area you get to is the expanding universe hall. Here you can see the journey through the solar system, which is uh, kind of cool. Like, eight, minute, eight minute space journey. Yeah, and it's uh, kind of presented in like 270 degrees or so. That's yeah, fun. To explain another cool projections here. How did the universe begin? A There's pretty neat projection here, all about how the universe the began. And it's narrated by Lightning McQueen himself, Owen Wilson. And verifiable. With the astronaut above us, Molly's playing with a really neat exhibit. <coughs> and dying. <laughs> all about the uh, the colors of light. So she's going to move these knobs here. So, like right now, I have it all blue. So add some green. Some blue. Yeah, it's, it's, that's fun. I like that one. That's really fun. This interactive here shows up the size of the observable universe, the known universe, and then you could pretty much uh, zoom in as far as you can. It's a Milky Way. We're getting closer. That's, that's good. Very kind of cool interactive feature. Still going. Still going. There's a lot of universe out there, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, here we go. We're speeding up now. Up and there we go. That's us. Yay. And you can even go for it. Now what I have to imagine is these star exhibit life, then and now hall, which is dinosaurs. Including, this is really neat, this is the maquette from the original Jurassic Park film of the, the T-Rex. The exhibit starts off with a bunch of fossils, including this one of a, uh, a dinosaur footprint that was found right here in Texas. This is from a sauropod, so a very large dinosaur. And then over here, you've got a really cool collection of fossils. I'm um, showing off all sorts of different, you know, ancient animal life. And I mean, these things are, are, are wild. Like these footprints here, they're estimated to be about 200 million years old. Uh, I'm not going to show you all of them, just a couple of the ones that I find kind of interesting. Uh, you do have some fossilized mollusks here, which are in really, really great condition. And then there's some stuff, like, look at this crab. This crab was uh, somewhere between 12 and 23 million years old. And um, seems like crabs haven't really changed all that much. 
And then I love this, they've got a shark tooth from the Megalodon. The Megalodon was a giant, giant shark, estimated to be about 50 feet long. And then you do have some, some dinosaur stuff over here. The Dimahedron skulls. Also, I am not a dinosaur expert. If I mispronounce any of these names, I do apologize. This section is all about uh, aquatic dinosaurs of various species and sizes. And it's interesting, this was ocean life in Dallas as, you know, during the age of the dinosaurs, 90 million years ago. This was all ocean. And home to giant turtle species and this absolutely terrifying swimming dinosaur. couple more species of dinosaurs over here. Also a fascinating interactive kind of projected onto the glass where you could learn all about some different species by touching them. We're now wrapped by a couple of the crown jewels of the collection here. You got a giant Alamosaurus and of course the most famous dinosaur, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Little arms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big teeth. <laughs> Here you can see a, a woolly mammoth in a really, really good condition. And look at this. This is a giant beaver. And uh, look at the giant beaver's teeth. And here you can see the, the nine vertebrae neck of the Alamosaurus, which makes me think that that one probably not an actual like a recreation instead of an actual dinosaur bone kind of thing. But this neck this, really was found in 2001 in Texas. Yeah, that is very real. I've been to my fair share of natural science museums and natural history museums. I'm not sure if I've ever seen something like this. You push the buttons here, like if you want to see the baby adolescent and adult hydrosaurs, you push the button and then there'll be projection onto where they are in the, the, the fossils. That's really cool. There's a, another really fun interactive over here. We get to battle between prey and, and predator, and you get to sort of build your own wacky animal. Too many adaptations, Molly. So there, there's Molly's dance skills. And if you look over here, she's also a dinosaur. I'm not sure how educational this is, but it's pretty fun. You have some skulls here for a Triceratops-esque dinosaur. And a couple of them. It's pretty neat. They do have a lab where the, the museum staff is working on the various fossils. Uh, nobody's working right now. It must be lunchtime, but that's cool. I can watch them work. Up the stairs above the dinosaur area, you get to the Hall of Birds. Throughout the bird hall, there's different areas where you can build your own bird, so might have to give that a try. Also, if some some skeletons over here comparing dinosaurs to modern birds. Really neat interactive here where Molly is flying like a bird. She's soaring around as a bald eagle and she's crashing. Oh, she's not crashing. Soar up. Once you go down it's hard to go up. <laughs> <laughs> also unfortunately the, uh, the build a bird a couple of them are not working so we'll never get to meet our bird. All right, we have a tough call. Restrooms or more cool exhibits? The next section of the museum is the Dynamic Earth Hall. I do enjoy this interactive feature here. It's a mapping of the plate action. So you click on volcanoes. It's going to show you everywhere where there's volcanoes. Click off the volcanoes and go to like everywhere there's mountain belts or earthquakes. Alright, time to experience the earthquake simulator. Might as well go to the extreme, right? Countdown. Looks like it moves a lot. Yeah, it does. Sure. 
find things like this interesting. It is a kind of more or less a sandbox, but then it's projection mapped based on how you dig things into a topographical map. So the higher it gets, it'll be more red. And then the water obviously can move as water moves. There's an area dedicated to extreme weather, complete with a twister. The next area is the energy hall. There are millions of tons of coal buried in the earth. I don't think the energy hall is one of the more interesting exhibits here at the museum, but I do like the, uh, the giant moving drill. That's pretty neat. I'm not sure what the Shell Voyager experience is, but it is temporarily closed. This display here shows off the different sections of an oil refinery machine. While this does look like something out of Iron Man, this is showing off how nuclear fusion works. As well as uh, plasma energy and various types of alternative renewable energy sources. This is the Gems and Mineral Hall. It's actually very, very well presented in here. Uh, everything's really well lit. Um, some things move, other things you can find out all kinds of stuff about. I really like that for the different exhibits, like, like this one here I'm walking to. You know, there, there's six different specimens in here and if you go to the machine and you're like, okay, I want to learn more about that one. And it'll, it'll tell you all about it. Uh, Molly is playing with an interesting interactive here, which I'm guessing is like a giant geo kind of thing. And she's going to spin the wheel and open it up. That, that's really fascinating. There are about 3,000 different We've now made it to the Discovering Life Hall. Got a kind of an interesting mobile up here showing the different families of animals. And all sorts of different animals and how they evolve and things like that. And a section here dedicated to the wildlife of Texas. Be cool if all little fox guys stood on their hind legs like that just all the time. They walked around like people. And Texas is home to fairy dogs, which are an adorable species of animal. Fun video game type interactive here where you uh, learn all about Texas animals and I just got the 10th highest score. Go me. Heading into the Beam Human Hall next. Right, so we just spent probably five to ten minutes making wire portraits of ourselves here in the mirror. Uh, Molly's yours, I think yours came out much better than mine. I tried. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I <laughs> get kind of frustrated, didn't even bother giving myself a mouth. <laughs> there we go. Not my best work. <laughs> this is one of my favorite interactives in the museum. Check out the wooden mirror. Waving, it's waving. That is really fascinating. Let's head on into the engineering and innovation hall. Robots. Yeah, look at that. Robots. This is if it's neat, you get to push the different buttons to code a song. What a cool idea. In this one, you learn about circuitry and patterns, and you make this ball roll around in the sand. In this one here, you're controlling more robots, and it's essentially freeze tag using like Xbox controllers. And that Autobot tries to catch me. Here's one all about airflow. So you put a handkerchief in some of the various entry ports. And it gets poofed out somewhere. Or it gets stuck. Or it gets stuck. This, this 
stairs are musical stairs. So as I'm going down the stairs, I play musical tones. On the bottom floor, they do have a children's museum area. Me and Molly don't have children, so we're not gonna head inside, but if you do, it's probably where the kids want to spend most of their time. I might like this one. Up next is the sports hall. The sports hall is really fun. You can race a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Dinosaurs a Cheetah, Jamal Charles, the Kansas City Chiefs, and uh, there's other kind of fun stuff in here as well. But the, the race is probably the best part. During our visit to the Perot Museum, there's a special exhibit. It looks like it, it just opened this past week. Um, Towers of Tomorrow, which is a shows off Lego stuff. And uh, this was an $8 upcharge. The museum cost $20 to get into, then an eight on top to go to the Lego exhibit. We have made it inside the Towers of Tomorrow Lego exhibit. And the first one you get to is a one to 200 scale of the CN Tower in Toronto. I've been up there. Long time ago, but I've been up there. Over 15,000 bricks. Here's the main hall in the Towers of Tomorrow exhibit. Essentially, it's Lego versions of uh, some of those famous skyscrapers. We've now made it to Chicago, and this is the, the former Sears Tower, now the Willis Tower. Also been up that one. Up next is the Burj Khalifa over in Dubai, the world's tallest building, and the, the tallest one here at the Lego's Towers of Tomorrow exhibit. It is very big. This one I have not been up. Hide and Ranger have been up. Yeah. I also love how it gives you all the kind of like information about it. Like down here, this model of the Burj Khalifa. It took 135 hours to build and 48,365 Lego bricks. Next building is the Tokyo Sky Train. Uh, never been to Tokyo. Definitely on the bucket list. We'll really want to get out to Japan at some point. Another one I'm not super familiar with, but an awesome looking building. This is the Taipei 101. And uh, really neat. This next exhibit's kind of neat. These are all skyscrapers from Australia. Of various sizes and designs. You got some different ones from across the, U the USA here. Mm -hmm. So you got the Atlanta, so the Chrysler building in New York. This is in LA. Oh, when I first looked at it, I'm like, oh, it's Stark Tower. <laughs> it does kind of look like Stark Tower. <laughs> and the Comcast building in Philly. This section is all in New York. Absolutely. The Empire State Building, one of the most famous buildings in the world. And then uh, two much more modern skyscrapers. The next building here is the Shanghai Tower. Very neat. How it twists around. Yeah. Here's the International Commerce Center from Hong Kong. One final section here. You've got the Twin Towers from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And then this very interesting building from Singapore. It kind of looks like there's a cruise ship on top of it. But that's it's like a green space and I think it's restaurants and things like that. And they'll do it for the, uh, the Lego exhibit. Uh, pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And that'll do it for our time here at the Perot Museum of Nature and Science. I thought it was really cool. It was very modern. Uh, lots of really fun interactive stuff. I'm not sure I actually learned anything, but I had a really good time. Well, like, we didn't read much. We did all the true, yeah. interactive. Um, but it, it's cool. A nice balance of like a science museum mixed with a natural history museum. Mm -hmm. So I think it did that well. Um, a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend checking it out. It only costs $20 to get in, which is really not too bad. If you have any questions about the museum, let us know in the comments section below. And thank you for watching.